Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with the Spanish gin and tonic. That's right, I'm gonna show you my take on the gin tonica, also known as the most refreshing hot weather cocktail ever. And there are so many reasons to love this, but I think my favorite one is the fact that this was not invented by bartenders, but was actually invented by chefs. Chefs from the Basque region of Spain to be specific. And when it comes to eating and drinking, those people know what they're doing. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by taking a peek at what I'm gonna put in my gin and tonica. And I think we can group these ingredients in three different categories. Right, we have our fruit, usually citrus, and I'm gonna be using some limes, lemons, and oranges. And if they're in season, you'll definitely wanna grab a blood orange, which I have here. And then we'll definitely want some fresh herbs. And I'll be using some of this gorgeous flowering basil, as well as a few sprigs of thyme. And then our third type of ingredient would be our spices. And what I have is some juniper berries, which is one of the main flavoring components of gin, as well as some pink peppercorns, which I will admit are mostly for appearance here. And then last but not least, I have some star anise, which I think is absolutely gorgeous in this, in both appearance and taste. Okay, so that covers the software. Let's move on to the hardware. And we'll start with something to measure our gin, also known as a jigger. And this one has a two ounce measure on one side and a one ounce measure on the other. And then we'll also need something to stir our drink, which can just be a regular spoon or one of these long thin cocktail stirrers. And as you can see, this one has a fork at the end, which bartenders use to stab olives, as well as the occasional unruly customer. And then lastly, and most importantly, we cannot make a Spanish gin and tonic without a very large, very bulbous glass. So I'm gonna be using one of these red wine glasses, which look great, but more importantly, will hold a lot of ice. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and start transferring some in. And I think just your standard size ice cubes are the best for this. Oh, when people say if you boil the water first, you get beautifully clear ice, which is what I did, but it didn't work at all. So thanks a lot, everyone who's ever said that to me. But anyway, clear or not, we want to fill that pretty much all the way to the top, at which point I'm going to start transferring in some citrus. And I'm going to use sliced blood orange and lemon and lime for this. And if you're making this at home, you can probably just pour in your gin and tonic first and then toss in your fruit. But since I really wanted to take some pretty pictures, I decided to carefully place mine in and arrange it just so, which will explain all the unnecessary fussing around. And the slice of that blood orange was so beautiful, I decided to add one more. And then once I eventually got all that where I wanted it, I went ahead and tossed in my spices, starting with that sweet and fragrant and very provocative looking star anise. And then I also tossed in some of those juniper berries. And for a much stronger flavor, you can rub those between your fingers to bring out the aroma. And then the same goes for the pink peppercorns. But I did not squeeze those. Because if you do, they can crumble. And I didn't want a bunch of gritty bits in the drink. And that's it, we can grab our gin and our jigger in this very specific way with our middle finger on one side and our other fingers on the other. Right, that is just how the fancy bartenders hold it. And we'll go ahead and add two ounces of our favorite gin. And in case you're keeping score at home, I used a Bombay gin, but obviously use anything you like. And then we'll follow that with some nice cold tonic water that we will very, very carefully pour in so as not to knock out all that carbonation. And I'm using a Mediterranean style that's less bitter than the Indian style, which I think is perfect for the Spanish style version of this drink. And as far as the ratio, I like about three parts tonic to one part gin. Okay, your average dive bar is about a one to one ratio and your average British style gin and tonic is probably two to one. And then next up, I'm gonna add a piece of orange zest, which after peeling, I'm gonna squeeze over the top, which sort of spritzes all those oils over the surface but I'm not gonna rim the glass before I pop it into the ice, which means rub it around the edge of the glass. Okay, for me, that makes it a little too overpowering. So I just squeeze, twist, and throw it in. And then I grab my stirrer and gave everything the old, old polka polka. But very gently, this is not something you wanna stir vigorously. And then because I want this a little more acidic and lime forward, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze in this little wedge. At which point we can add in our fresh herbs which again for me was some very fragrant flowering basil, plus a few sprigs of thyme, which you want to squeeze between your fingers as you add it in, so as to activate all those essential oils. And that's it, we'll give this one more very gentle agitation. 
And then after that, because I'm going to take some pictures, I spent a few moments moving some of those spices around so they'd be a little more visible. But don't worry. We don't need to be in any hurry. All right, I'm a firm believer that a perfect Spanish gin and tonic should be served about five minutes after making so that everything is super cold and all those flavors and fragrances have had time to mingle and develop. And that's it. Once I was happy with it, I picked it up and moved it to my drinking counter, which is the same counter without the cutting board. And I took a big sip of what is without a doubt one of the greatest cocktails ever invented. And the whole idea behind this drink is to add things to the glass to make things that already taste great in the gin taste even more amazing. So I encourage you to try some different gins and then decide on your own custom garnishes. Okay, you are after all the Chandler and Monica of your gin and tonica. And speaking of friends, imagine all your friends coming over, possibly bringing a bottle of their favorite gin, and then you set up a whole table with different garnishes and different tonics, and then everybody gets to do their thing. And again, the spices are generally for show, although they do add a little bit of flavor, especially as they sit and steep as you drink this. But the herbs and the citrus, on the other hand, are totally in your face. And I mean that literally. Every time I take a sip here, that thyme and basil is right next to my nose. And if those herbs don't tickle your fancy, you could go with tarragon or dill, or rosemary is also a popular choice. And as I sip, all those amazing citrus oils are mingling in, carried by that effervescence in the tonic, with its little hint of bitterness, that as you know makes all the other flavors taste better. So to summarize, this is a perfect drink, although it's not just a drink, it's a thousand drinks, depending on what you put in it. But the point is you get to decide, which is the second most fun thing about this whole operation. Oh yeah, the slowly sipping this is the best part. Except there's one problem here. Why am I drinking this inside? Let me go ahead and grab this and head out to the deck so I can sip this in its most enjoyable setting. And as legend has it, this was invented by Basque chefs who would enjoy gin and tonics after a hot shift in the kitchen or during a hot shift in the kitchen. And because chefs are always going to chef, they would add different scraps of fruit and vegetables and herbs to this, along with whatever spices made sense. And as the story goes, that's how the Spanish gin and tonic was invented. And on behalf of everyone who's ever had one, I would like to pass along our sincere thanks. All right, this is not just a cocktail. It is a mood. And if you're into moods, especially good ones, then I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.